Picking up where we left off in Domain 1, we're next looking at the CIA triad. CIA stands for Confidentiality, Integrity, and Availability. These are our primary security goals as a security professional when dealing with the protection of our valuable information assets. Let's take a close look at what these three details are, these three components. First, we'll look at confidentiality. The primary issue with confidentiality is keeping the secrets secret. In other words, I know something that has value, and I don't want anybody else to know what this information is. Otherwise, the value of the information is now theirs, and I have lost value in my information assets. So I have to protect the secrecy of this information. The term specifically is confidentiality. There are two subsets, if you will, of confidentiality, and that's trying to protect against the disclosure of this valuable information asset. The first aspect of this is called privacy. Now, when the term privacy is used relative to information assets, it generally implies that we are protecting the personally identifiable information of an individual. So we're trying to hold that information as secret and confidential. Again, privacy deals with PII primarily. The next term is called secrecy, and there's a subtle difference between confidentiality and secrecy. Confidentiality says you don't know the meaning of the information. Maybe you don't get access to it, so you can't learn it. In other words, if you can't read what the account number is, you can't get into that financial account. So keeping somebody away from the information is keeping it confidential. However, a bad guy might know that the information exists. Therefore, the information isn't exactly secret, but the information remains confidential. So secrecy deals with the fact that the unauthorized is unaware of the information asset or information of the flow of that information across some medium. So secrecy deals with the fact that there isn't even an awareness that the information exists. Whereas confidentiality says you might be aware that the information asset exists or that there was a flow of information, but you don't know what the meaning of that information was. You don't know what the information held. We'll understand this a little bit more when we get into the domain that deals with cryptography. But confidentiality is the C in the CIA triad. Now the I in CIA is integrity. Integrity deals with the accuracy authenticity, completeness, and consistency. Now, accuracy says if you have 10 apples, the data says you have 10 apples. It matches the physical reality, and that deals with accuracy. Suppose we ask somebody, how many apples do we have? And you get an answer, 14. Who is it that told you that answer? Was that somebody you should trust? Well, that's the authenticity of the information. Did it come from a trusted source? When we look at integrity, there's another notion here. Not only does the information have to be accurate, it has to be trustworthy. And trustworthy kind of is like that superset that says the information is accurate and it came from somebody that I believe. So that's why authenticity is here. We have to know who provided that information and are they going to provide us the accurate information. See, a bad guy might penetrate your environment and tell you incorrect things. And therefore, you would make a bad business decision based on what you thought was accurate information, but it came from an unauthenticated and untrustworthy source. The next aspect of integrity deals with the completeness of the information. Suppose we have a database that has a thousand records in it, and you submit a query for people from California. Well, we might have 500 people in our database from California. If your result set only shows 15 of those 500 records, your information isn't complete, and therefore the integrity of the information is not very high. So the completeness of information is a component of integrity. Completeness says you get access to all of the relevant information. Finally, consistency of information deals with the fact that in many cases, we will have multiple copies of the same information. Perhaps we have a copy of the database in Oshkosh and a second copy of the database in Schenectady. 
This is often done for redundancy, so I have two copies. In case one copy goes bad, I can always go look at the other copy. We do it for capacity. If the first database is so busy that I have to wait for 10 minutes to get my response, maybe I have a second copy of the database. So now we do kind of a load balancing and it reduces the wait time to get a response back. So capacity is another component of this. Geographic distribution. If we have these two different cities, let's give them each a copy of the database. Well, that's why we'll have multiple copies. But suppose the copy of the database in Oshkosh shows 500 people from California, but the copy of the database in Schenectady only shows 214 people in California. These two copies of the database are inconsistent, and therefore the integrity of the information is reduced. So I want accuracy, authenticity, completeness, and consistency of the information. And overall, what that says is the information is trustworthy. I can believe it, and I can make business decisions based on this information, and hopefully this will lead me to the best possible business decision that will help me maximize my profits. Remember, maximizing profits is one of the core components of the prudent management of an enterprise. When it comes to the integrity of information, there are two aspects. First, we'll need to protect the integrity of the information. And the notion here is that we need to keep the bad guy away from the data. Because if the bad guy can access the data, then the bad guy can alter the data. In other words, he's kind of cooking the books. Maybe he's adding himself as a vendor that you have to pay $10,000 a month to. So now automatically a check will spit out to him for $10,000. So my goal here for integrity protection is to keep the bad guy away from the data so that he can't cook the books and violate the integrity of the data. The second aspect of integrity of information deals with the verification of the integrity of the data. And this is primarily done at the time of use. Suppose I have a database that stores my inventory and I'm about to make a decision on how many widgets I need to buy. And so I'm going to run a query and I'm going to record or collect all the details of the number of widgets I have around the country so that I can decide whether I need to buy a thousand widgets or a million widgets. And that's a huge business decision. The information that's been sitting out there in these databases has been in storage for some period of time. And it's possible that the information has gotten altered or corrupted in some manner. That means somebody might have been cooking the books. And maybe I shouldn't trust this information. So at time of use, I might actually pick up the telephone and call the four different warehouses around the country, for example, and ask them, how many widgets do you have in stock? I show 14 here. I thought you had more than a thousand. And so I might verify the accuracy of the data at the time of use when I'm about to make that critical business decision. So the integrity of data is the second component of the security principles that we use to protect the valuable information assets. And then finally, the third component is availability. Availability deals with making the information accessible when the information is needed. So if I'm about to make a critical business decision, whether it's a thousand widgets or a million widgets, I need access to that information when I'm about to make that business decision. So I'll look at the availability of the information as that third security principle that I have to implement to protect the valuable information assets. And that builds the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability.